So I'm on my way to pick the car up again. It doesn't stay at my place. And uh, I'm gonna travel with a little bit of eco-friendliness on the electric skateboard today. Save a bit of fuel costs. Every penny counts. So what have we got lined up on the Porsche project today? Well, in the intro video, I gave you a brief overview of some of the uh, problem areas on this car. And, um, you know, some of them are small, some of them are big, such as the uh, rust and needing to repair whole panels like this rear uh, wing, this fender here. Um, but my kind of plan with this car is to ideally have it as a rolling restoration for as long as possible. Um, we're coming into spring soon. We've got spring and summer, lovely time of year. This will be the ideal kind of car to be able to just use and enjoy. Um, but all I really want to do to start with is to make it safe and uh, and usable. And like I said, we've got the uh, the two seats in the back for the kids. That's brilliant. Uh, but yeah, so what we're going to do is focus on a few of those little items. Um, try and tidy up some of this wiring to start with. Uh, I will be replacing the loom, but I just need to make sure that that is not going to catch fire and this baby is going to burn to the ground. However, having said that, I do, and uh, a lot of you guys did mention this, carry a fire extinguisher in the car just in case. That, 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 they all have fire extinguishers in them. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna focus on things like that. We're gonna be doing stuff like the pedal box that needs some adjustment. You know, looking at brakes, going around the car, just getting things like lights all working correctly, having a little tidy up. Tidying up in there, getting some bits sorted out and just really getting it all working before, you know, and making sure it all works before we really dive deep into restoring this car. First job today is uh, just to rectify an annoyance, really, and that's these things springing around. So when I'm driving it, all I can hear is these just doing this. And it sounds like the engine's falling apart, but it's not, it's these things just pinging around. Anyway, in the first video, I don't know if you noticed this, but when I took the air box off, these spring clips, clip down on that side, these, the tab that it's meant to clip into is not in the right place on any of them. Uh, I'm trying to uh, scratch my head to figure it out, but basically this part that sits on top of the carb is uh, is 180 degrees out. So we're gonna take that off, spin it around, clamp that down, stop that annoyance factor. Okay, so that is all of the uh, little bolts and the screws out of there. Uh, one little tip, having something like this, is just, this literally costs a pound or a dollar to buy one of these on eBay. Little uh, magnet just saves anything being uh, dropping down in there. So, let's just take these off. One, two, three, they're all the same. Okay, and then, briefly, it can come back off. Let's have a little look in there while, uh, while we clean all that up at some stage. A little bit dirty. There we go. Not too bad. So I've spun that all around now, that'll all fit, but before I put the airbox back on, I'm just gonna get the old vacuum out and get some of these leaves up, some of the dirt up from in the engine bay. Next, again, while we're in here, we've got a bit more access to the engine bay. Let's just give it a quick wipe over and clean it up. Let's put the 
gearbox back in place. Tiny little clean up. It's a little bit better in there. Yeah. And now uh, hopefully these should clamp down and not be so annoying. One, two. As I've mentioned in the last video, I've already started to acquire some of the panels I need to do the uh, body restoration on this car. So we've got this whole back little kind of panel here. Uh, as you can see on mine, we've got, I don't know what's happened here. It looks like uh, the actual Metal is bent there and someone's filled it at some point. Got a bit of rust down here. So yeah, it's easier for me just to replace that complete panel and have a nice fresh one to start with. So that's gonna go on. Uh, to do that, we're gonna literally need to strip out the whole of the back of that car to be able to get that in place. So uh, that is not an easy job, but uh, when we go around and do the body, that will get uh, welded onto the car. Let's talk about a big issue with this car and that is the wiring. Now. I uh, went through and showed you that last week. I also mentioned in the comments of the video, I did actually go ahead and buy a loom for this car a little while ago. Unfortunately, I didn't check it. Now, when I went to check the loom and look at it against the wiring diagram for this car, whatever they have sent me is nothing like this 911. So I'll show you what I mean. So this is all of the wiring that arrived when I ordered it up. Unfortunately, at the time, I didn't have this nice, colourful wiring diagram. And so it took me a while to be able to check it. Now, when I've gone to check it, none of it seems to marry up with either the wiring diagram there or from what I can see, any of the wiring on the car. So I've got one major loom over here with various little spurs off of it and branches. There we go. So that is my major big loom. I've then got this second smaller loom here. And then two more down here. So two little ones. Uh, and like I say, cannot figure out if that is from my car. It doesn't look like it. Or, if it's not, what the heck it comes from. Uh, unfortunately, it was too long for me to be able to send it back. I did try, but uh, they were having none of it. Uh, we've got a, a rear bumper there, or a rear lower valance for the 308 project, so that's cool. Got a few other bits that I've been acquiring. We've got a uh, rear window repair little panel there. A couple of other electrical bits, a fuse box. So more wiring, that is genuine Porsche wiring and a few other little bits there, seals, etc. So we're starting to acquire some bits for this project. Something else I mentioned in that intro video was the build spec on the car and that lovely tangerine color. So let's have a quick look at that. So here we've got the official certificate of authenticity direct from Porsche themselves on my car. Covered up a little bit of personal data here, but you can see it is a 1970 911T Carmen Coupe. It was actually finished production on the 1st of December 69. So it is already genuinely a 50 year old car. Here's another cool thing about it. We've got uh, the paint code, which is a Tangerine 2323. So it is a beautiful, very cool, period, kind of funky orange color and uh, it's gonna get repainted back to that original factory color when we do all the body work on this car. We, uh, we should have the black leather at seats. As you can see, uh, we've got something slightly different, probably from the 80s on the car. Uh, the optional equipment we have was uh, comfort equipment. So we had a leather steering wheel, again, that's been changed. And we had instruments and oil tank, not like the 911S. So we had a couple of upgrades on the car. Anyway, there you go. That is, uh, that is all the official documentation. And um, yeah, always nice to have that with these kind of cars. Now the brakes on this 50 year old Porsche are actually not too bad. We've got a little bit of pedal adjustment uh, to do. Get a bit of handbrake stick when the car has been left for a while. Uh, but that's not really unusual with cars. Anyway, I'm going to still whip off all the wheels, uh, inspect all the brakes, 
but at the same time that gives me access to have a look in this area where these type of Porsches really suffer with rust and this one looks like it's been no exception. Okay, safety first, we've got a couple of axle stands. Let's have a little look here. First of all, let's uh, take a look at this rear brake system. So this is a 50 year old car, complete with rear discs. Uh, pretty rare 50 years ago on any kind of car. So uh, rear discs, look at that, we've got a spacer on the back there. Uh, the disc actually looks not too bad. It's, uh, it's hardly any wear on it. Disc pads, small little tiny uh, caliper there in comparison to uh, that. Um, pads, I'm sure, are probably compatible with something uh, that is non-Porsche and uh, quite cheap. These rear uh, bumpers, they were replaced, so you can see they're clean in there. Uh, we've got a stainless steel rear exhaust system, stainless steel uh, heat exchangers here. So uh, they're all good. If I take a little closer look inside here, you can see there's a little bit of oil. So we've got an oil leak, which is not uncommon on uh, Porsches like this, of this era. Uh, suspension, like I say, we will be going through at some point. Now, the big one with these kind of cars is rust. Uh, and the problem being is that these cars did not have any kind of plastic wheel arch liner or anything like that. So all of the road dirt ends up splattering up in all of this area. It just sits there and it ends up just rotting out. As you can see, this car has uh, been undercoated with some kind of a wax oil sealant. But beyond that, where it's come off, you can see that uh, we've got a few rust issues, rust issues over there. All that's gonna be need needing to uh, be cut out or treated. Again here, a lot of surface rust. These all need to be replaced. Um, but we've definitely got our work cut out. Let's have a look up here. Again, this uh, this whole rear arch, uh, sorry, this whole rear panel or this fender will be uh, completely changed. I think uh, there's too much rust in this one to uh, try and save it. Back there you can see uh, the back of the light as well. So this is something I was gonna point out in the last video, I don't know if I did or not, but you can see here on this rear fender, but it's had a lot of filler. You can see some here starting to bubble out. Now normally there's a little circular plate here that you can pop out on this car. And if I show you from the back, you can see the plate is still there. You've got a nut holding it in. However, Someone has just filled over the top of that and <laughs> just sprayed it all in. So, yep, typical Porsche repair, cheap repair of the uh, of the era. So we've definitely got our work cut out in this area here. I'm gonna take the front wheel off now and just inspect that front section to see if it's as bad as this. Generally on the front, it's normally a similar story on these classic Porsches. Uh, this one again has been wax oiled, protected at some stage, uh, which has probably helped the car to survive a little bit longer. Let's have a little look around. Again, I've seen worse. Uh, I had that green Porsche that I showed you in the first video and that when you looked in here, everything was literally rotting apart. There were holes everywhere. So this is not bad in comparison. Uh, again, Brakes look okay, not been used for a long time, so uh, maybe they could be overhauled, but they do seem to stop at the moment, so uh, we'll clean them up. Uh, suspension, looking pretty old. Could probably do with uh, a complete refresh around all four corners. And then the other place that uh, early Porsches really do suffer is up here around the headlight bowl, uh, bowl here. All this inner wing, the battery box here, uh, now, another thing to show you on this one. So we've got this lovely front arch and uh, wing. And uh, the classic one obviously has to have this recess for the front side light indicator. Uh, these fenders were extremely expensive. 
Uh, they've started to produce a few aftermarket ones now, so the prices have come down. They're still very expensive, but you know, typically for an aftermarket, seven, eight hundred pounds for one of these. So what a lot of people did with the 80s cars that had the impact bumpers, they did not have this recess here. It was a straight line. And uh, some people, literally, as you can see here, just added that lower bit. We've got a line there where it's just been welded into place. <laughs> so that, uh, and you can see here where it's been filled, you've not got a complete smooth finish. So there you go, this, like I say, will be getting replaced uh, again at some point. So, yep, we'll get this baby looking good. So with the car up and the wheels off, it gives me a good opportunity to do another uh, job on this car. So we can get to those headlight bar bowls at the front there that I showed you uh, and the wiring and again at the back there. Uh, the reason being is I've got another job that I need to do on this car and that is all the lighting. I've literally got one light working at the front, one very faint one over here and nothing at the back at all. So we're gonna go around the car, try and rectify that and uh, get this car a little bit safer so it can be used past four o'clock at the moment because uh, that's when it's getting dark here in the UK. So our indicators are working on this side of the car. We got a fast flash on that side, which indicates that we have a bulb out. So let's try and figure that one out. So we've got a circuit tester on. You can see back of the car, it's flashing on my uh, tester rosser light there. You can see the reflection at the front. It's actually flashing in my side light. One thing I love about these early Porsches is some of the just the simple design features. So we've got our little wiring loom here that connects to a block. Other side of that simply just feeds on in there to our indicators and our lights. Right, just simply by popping that off, I can just take my little circuit tester. And as you can see, I'm getting power to this side, so my issue is going to be on wiring over here somewhere. And there you go, if only all the jobs on this car were as simple as that. Okay, so we have both the headlights out of the car now. Now, surprise, surprise, guess what? Nothing to do with the actual uh, bulbs themselves. This one I've switched over with the other side. Remember, this one was the good one. This one was the uh, dull one, so it's not the bulbs. It's our wiring. So uh, I'm gonna go around the car and just see if there's anything obvious. So at the rear of the car, the lights are all off now. Um, I've inspected all the wiring. There is nothing obvious, everything is connected. So uh, there's uh, some side lights at the front of the car that I need to have a quick look at, but it's looking more like that somewhere in the loom there is a problem, which is, like I say, no surprise, judging by the state of the wiring on this car. There's many possibilities where the fault could really be coming from on my lights. One of them is obviously our dash lighting. Uh, this is the light switch. Lots and lots of wires going to that. Lots of them have been spliced and cut into. So uh, we're going to look at that. The other place is uh, at the front with that little fuse board. So our fuse block in the car doesn't look brilliant and uh, some of the wires to it are a bit sketchy. For example, when I was looking at this little block over here, look at this red wire. It's literally just been tied around it. And I trace that back, it comes all the way down the front of the car, down here, and just goes into that bottom fuse. So uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things that we're gonna need to rectify on this. So before I uh, start continuing any further with that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna study some of the wiring, some of the wiring diagrams here and uh, just get my head around everything, how it's meant to uh, go together. And then we will uh, see if we can rectify what's going on with those lights. We've obviously got the, uh, the gaffer tape here to uh, cover up some of the rust. Someone mentioned we can get uh, color coded so we can get some red stuff to go on there for the next uh, video. Fuel flap doesn't seem to spring very well on this or open, uh, which can be quite embarrassing at uh, a petrol station if you're trying to fill up and you can't actually get the thing open. So let's just see if we can improve that slightly. See if we can work that in. And this is my chosen method. Just work that in place. And that 
has done the trick nicely. Okay, let's do a real life test. So I'm at the petrol station getting fuel. Yes. As I mentioned in that first video, the dash on this car has been changed. It's, uh, it's very similar to the original, but many people uh, change them to these 80s style dashes just because the original 60s, 70s dash were just not available. And, uh, and when they became available, they were very expensive. They're still very expensive. So this gives you an idea of how much money you can really sink into these cars on a restoration. If you want to do a nut and bolt, bring this back to factory, it is going to cost you an arm and a leg. Uh, top of the dash here, £2,000. Uh, that is just the top. I don't know if that comes with the actual speaker grill. There's a speaker in the middle there. I'd obviously need the speaker, the speaker grill, all the lower stuff. So £2,000 plus fat is a starting point. So it's not just the top dash here. It's this lower part of the dash. Um, it all needs to be changed. And this has all been uh, switched around to an 80s style dash. I also mentioned those door pockets in the previous video. This is a typical price to uh, put some new door pockets on the car. I want some factory ones made by Porsche. So the front ones, 615 pound each side, and then they're, they're split into two. So you've got front and you've got rears. Rears here. 509 each so that is what 2200 2250 plus fat just for door pockets again it's a non sunroof which is a very desirable uh, model do these work yes they do look at that so our lights work it's not too bad in here uh, that roof is uh, good that lining's fine back there is okay carpets are pretty good We've had seat belts installed at some point on this car. And uh, to be honest, they're in the wrong kind of place for me. They uh, end up halfway up your body. So I don't know if that's fixable. Well, everything's fixable at a price. Uh, back there, a parcel shelf, you can see some bad wiring again. Main thing with this is all our clocks. Uh, half of those are not working correctly. Speedo is, uh, rev counter, not. Clock, not. Lights. We're going to try and focus a, a little bit on today. Uh, wipers are working. So always fun with the wipers on these early cars. You've got your control. And the only way to stop it is you kind of have to guess. You have a nice little game. I'm trying to get it to stop in the right place. So my horn is not working on the 911. Something that hasn't worked for a long time. It's a very quick fix actually just have to take the steering wheel off I've got a cable that's come off here got a contact plate that sits on there and that hooks into this bit which uh, is connected to the horn button so let's see if we can get it working you need a horn on an old car like this that's for sure <laughs> he's got a bit of a frog in its throat but it, uh, it's working I always love having a uh, rummage through the glove box on these things. So we've got a uh, we've got a specialist spark plug socket tool for the Porsche 911. I don't know if you've ever tried to take a 911 spark plug out without using one of them. Trust me, it can be an absolute nightmare. Well worth the cost to save the aggravation. We've also got a nice little clock face here. That would go in there normally. That'd look pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, plenty of other little bits in there. What else? We've got some cabling. Anyway. So guys, I think you probably get an idea. This is not going to be a very quick and easy fix on the Porsche. Literally every single part in that car needs some kind of work. So uh, my plan really is just to take my time, enjoy the process and enjoy the restoration of that car. Which brings me on to uh, the next question a lot of people are asking. Is it worth it? And how much did I pay for that car? Well, to answer that, there's two answers. Number one, is it worth it? For me, it's always worth it. It's not about the financial gain. It's about the car itself and enjoying the project. And uh, as I said in the first video, when I first um, got my Ferrari, I was fortunate enough to get a Ferrari. It meant selling my uh, two classic Porsches, which weren't in a great state and uh, they, kind of funded a part of that first 
Ferrari, but I always miss that classic Porsche shape. And uh, when I was able to actually get another one, I did it just before the Porsche boom. So I've had the car a little while, it sat around and, uh, and these things have had the focus. Um, but I paid just £10,000 for that car, which doesn't matter which uh, side of the pond you're on at the moment, over here or in the US, that kind of money is still very cheap for a classic 911. So I can put a lot of money into the car without having to worry too much that I'm gonna uh, not recoup that. But like I say, it's about the car itself. So I'm gonna enjoy that project and I hope you guys are gonna enjoy it with me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you've got any comments, any suggestions, please write them down below. I read all of them. Uh, I am not an expert on these Porsches. I know uh, quite a bit, but uh, there's a lot more guys out there that know far more about these than me. So uh, any of your input is really appreciated. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoy it, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to, you can see what I get up to on uh, Instagram. And I will see you all again very shortly in the next one. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now.